Photosynthesis is the process by which green plants and certain other autotrophic organisms manufacture their own food material in the form of carbohydrates from carbon dioxide and water in the presence of chlorophyll and sunlight through a complex series of reactions within the organism. In other words, it is a process of converting light energy to chemical energy. Photosynthesis takes place inside cellular organelles called chloroplasts, which contain abundant photosynthetic pigments called chlorophyll. Chloroplasts are found in abundance in green leaves and are therefore the major site of photosynthesis in plants. Gaseous oxygen is a major byproduct of the process of photosynthesis. The chemical reactions that take place in this process may be summarized as follows. Photosynthesis occurs in two major steps, both of which take place within the chloroplasts, a light reaction and a dark reaction. Starch is eventually formed as a reserve food by plants at the end of a photosynthetic process. If a plant is stripped of any one or all of the vital factors necessary for it to carry on photosynthesis, then photosynthesis immediately ceases to occur in that plant. As a result, the plant starts utilizing its existing reserve food that's been stored in the form of starch. Eventually, the plant would have used up all its remaining stored starch and become what is known as a de-starched plant. A de-starched plant cannot remain alive for long unless it is resupplied with the vital factors necessary for photosynthesis to occur. The absence or presence of starch and thereby photosynthesis is determined using iodine solution, which turns blue-black in color in the presence of starch, but retains its original brown color in the absence of starch. The classic Moll's half-leaf experiment elegantly demonstrates the vital role played by carbon dioxide light, water, and chlorophyll in the process of photosynthesis in plants. To perform the Moll's half-leaf experiment, we'll need the following. A potted plant, preferably with long and narrow leaves. Water bath. A large test tube. Petri dishes. Ethanol or isopropanol or methylated spirit. Aqueous iodine solution. Forceps. Glycerol or grease. Potassium or sodium hydroxide, a white mouth bottle or flask, a rubber cork split in the middle, clamp stand. Begin the experiment by placing the potted plant in the dark for about two to three days. This step is essential in order to rid the plant of any starch that was formed in the leaves prior to the start of the experiment. At the end of this time period, remove the potted plant from the dark. Prepare about 100 ml of fresh potassium or sodium hydroxide solution and introduce it into the white mouth flask. Position the flask using a clamp stand near the potted plant. Take the split cork and position one of the leaves in between the cork in such a way that a portion of the leaf remains outside on both ends of the cork while a portion remains in between the cork pieces. Now carefully insert the cork into the mouth of the flask while taking care not to crush the leaf between the cork pieces. Seal the mouth of the flask using glycerol or grease. Leave the setup in sunlight for several hours. Now disassemble the setup and de-starch the leaf. Introduce the leaf into the test tube containing the alcohol solution. Place the tube in the boiling water bath. Make sure to turn off the burner flame once the tube has been placed in the bath. This is to make sure that the alcohol fumes do not catch fire during the boiling process which is a huge possibility considering the highly flammable nature of alcohols. Alternatively, you may use a hot plate for boiling instead of an open flame. During this boiling step, Chlorophyll pigments in the leaf are decolorized by the hot alcohol solution, resulting in a bleached leaf with pale white color. This step is necessary for a better visualization of the iodine starch reaction on the leaf surface in the later part of this experiment. Once bleaching of the leaf has been accomplished, 
remove the leaf from the alcohol using a forcep. Briefly place the leaf for a few seconds in the hot water bath in order to soften the leaf. Transfer the leaf in a petri dish containing iodine solution. After a couple of minutes, you will notice this result. The portion of the leaf outside the flask and the cork turns blue-black in color, while the portion of the leaf in between the cork and inside the flask do not show any significant change in color except for a faint brown iodine color. This is a negative test for starch and thereby photosynthesis. Here's why. The portion of the leaf exposed to the outside receives all the conditions essential for photosynthesis to occur. It receives water from the soil in the pot, carbon dioxide from the air, and light from the sun, in addition to the chlorophyll already present in the leaf. Hence, it carries out photosynthesis unhindered and therefore tests positive for starch. The portion of the leaf in between the split cork contains chlorophyll and receives water from the plant but is devoid of carbon dioxide and light from the sun. It is therefore robbed of its ability to carry out photosynthesis and consequently tests negative for starch. And finally, the portion of the leaf inside the flask contains chlorophyll, receives water from the plant and light from the sun. However, since the hydroxide solution in the flask has absorbed all the carbon dioxide contained in inside the flask, this portion of the leaf cannot carry out photosynthesis in the absence of carbon dioxide, hence it tests negative for starch. This simple yet elegant experiment clearly demonstrates that carbon dioxide, light, water and chlorophyll as a whole is essential for photosynthesis to take place in a plant.